The Alpha 3 made its first appearance in the 1971 Estes catalog. It was a simple three fins with a nose cone design based off the original K25 Alpha kit, but with a pre-molded plastic fin unit and a plastic nose cone, both of which required no filling, sanding, or painting. This was considered to be Estes' first easy-to-assemble rocket kit. Also in 1971, Estes featured the new Alpha 3 in the Porta Pad starter kit as well as the Electro Launch starter kit. Two years later, in 1973, Estes would improve the look of the Alpha 3 with some basic decals that consisted of a square wave roll pattern at the top of the body tube and a rectangular block roll pattern near the bottom. In the center, between the two roll patterns, was a small Estes logo. The Alpha 3 would retain this look for the next 20 years, when in 1993 the Alpha 3 received a major makeover. Gone was the white body tube with red nose cone and fins. They were replaced with a pre-painted black body tube and bright orange nose cone and fins. The previously provided black water slide decals were replaced with self-adhesive orange decals of the same roll patterns. And just to interject a personal commentary here, I didn't really see this change as an improvement. While black and orange can be a nice combination, self-adhesive decals, while perhaps easier to apply than water slide decals, tend to be much thicker and leave a visible edge. Also, the orange color applied over black kind of produced a dingy orange that really didn't match the nose cone and fins. Uh, in my opinion, vinyl would have been a better choice, but would probably have been cost prohibitive. The Alpha 3 retains this orange and black color scheme to this day, which as of filming includes the 2022 model year catalog. This makes the Alpha 3 the third longest continuously in production rocket kit in the history of our hobby behind only the Big Bertha and the original Alpha. Two special edition variations on the Alpha 3 have also been produced. In 1998, for Estes' 40th anniversary, the Alpha 4 was released, which was basically an Alpha 3 with a metallic red body tube and gloss black fins and nose cone and a, commem and a commemorative 40th anniversary decal. In 2018, for Estes' 60th anniversary, the Alpha 6 was released with a metallic white body tube, metallic red fins and nose cone, and a commemorative 60th anniversary decal. Given its continued popularity with new and experienced rocketeers alike, the Estes Alpha 3 is likely to be around for quite a while. Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this first uh, project video. Um, first of all, I want to kind of apologize for the length of time it took this video to get created. Uh, I had originally planned on putting this up pretty soon after I did my uh, introductory video, but of course uh, life has other plans and um, <laughs> it's, it's been a few months now, so uh, again, apologies for that. It's not my... Uh, intention to um, to have you know months and months between videos uh, I'm not going to be producing videos on any kind of regular schedule it's the, as I said in the introductory video this is a this is a vlog of my rocketry projects and uh, when I do a project I will try to uh, to make a video and and put it up on on the channel um, so Basically, the videos will come when, when the projects uh, get done. So, uh, anyway, as I stated in the introductory video, we are going to do an Alpha 3. Um, you might notice that I'm showing you a launch set and not a kit of the Alpha 3, and there is a reason for that. Uh, when I went to the hobby store to get the kit, uh, I actually went to Hobby Lobby and uh, the launch set was on sale for $17 and I believe the kit was $21. Uh, they didn't have any at Hobby Lobby but the, the store that did have them wanted $21 for just the rocket so I ended up buying the launch set to get the kit. Um, again we are going to do this because this is retro rockets uh, we're gonna do this in the 1970s uh, white 
and red with black markings uh, livery. And um, what I thought I'd do here is just go ahead and, since I have the uh, uh, launch set, was just do a quick unboxing of this. Uh, I know there's probably been a million of unboxings of this launch set, but you know what the heck? We've got it in front of us. We got to get the kit out of it anyway, so we might as well take a look at what's inside the box. So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and open this box. And my little scalpel here. Okay. Um, I wanted to do something simple for my first project. Partially because I don't know how this uh, is going to go in terms of what I'm going to film, uh, what I'm not going to film, uh, the, you know, as far as, I don't know if you've noticed, but I have a pretty bad essential tremor, uh, so I'm not going to do a lot of building on camera because that would just be maddening for you to watch me try to put a decal on. It's, it's, <laughs> it's maddening for me. Um, but I do want to present, you know, the steps and stuff and, and uh, give you kind of a uh, description of the project and, and how it's going. So uh, I kind of wanted to do a simple rocket just to kind of feel that process out. Um, and so this is the one I picked. Uh, it's one I've been wanting to do. Uh, it's I've got an Alpha up there uh, that is in the original 70s paint scheme and I would like to just have the Alpha 3 to go alongside of it. So it was a logical choice. So anyway, without further ado, we have, uh, as one might expect, and it's taped in there pretty good. Okay, we have a launch rods. Now, Estes recently, I don't know how recently, but they started putting their launch rods in three pieces. They used to come in two pieces. Uh, this is a 1 8 inch rod. Um, it looks to be about the same length as the old one used to be, roughly about three feet. Um, but yeah, yeah, they started breaking them down a little bit more. So now you have two joints instead of one joint that could be a possible hang-up for your launch lug. Not sure how I feel about that. But uh, is what it is. Anyway, three-piece launch rod. Uh, let's see here. They've got the bags glued to the inside of the box <laughs> so they don't move around. So you actually have to unglue the bags. Here's your launch pad. It's your standard Estes three-leg launch pad. Fairly easy to put together. It looks like they've got the uh, uh, launch leads in there that will go with your launch controller. Oh, they've got the launch controller in there too. I my bad. They, they have uh, the launch controller and launch leads in there. So anyway, uh, I won't be using this. I have about five or six of these. I don't need another one. I'll probably uh, donate this to a aspiring young rocketeer next time I go out to launch and um, yeah, that's that's not where we bought it. We bought it for the rocket, right? And here is the rocket kit and interestingly they package the fins in a separate bag. That's, I did not expect that. So here's our three-piece plastic fin unit. It's orange uh, as is the new uh, standard for the Alpha 3. It's molded in orange plastic and you get a orange nose cone and a pre-painted black body tube. You can see that. Go ahead and open this. We're going to need it open anyway, so let's get it open. No sense in leaving it in the bag. Okay. So, here we go. Um, just about lost that. Okay. So we have a, uh, about a five and a half inch uh, pre-painted black body tube. Um, not, I mean, these are fine uh, for people that are just starting out. If you don't want to, if you want to go with the orange and black, uh, by all means, that's you know, this this will work. Uh, the seams are not filled on this, so you can definitely make out where the where the tube spiral seams are. Uh, we will not be using this tube. Uh, we're going to head and cut ourselves a 
piece of body tube um, that is unpainted and the reason is because we're going to be using a white primer on it and filling the seams and all of that and for that this uh, this very slick uh, glossy paint finish on this one would just get in the way we'd be sanding it off anyway so um, so we'll go ahead and, and clone our own uh, body tube this is pretty close to a BT20 I think it is a BT20 um, so yeah, that'll be probably the first thing we do, is take a piece of BT-20 and cut it to the correct length. Um, so there's that. Nose cone, we'll get to look at the thin unit out of its bag. Uh, what's nice about uh, buying the launch set is the box provides a little protection for the plastic fin unit and this one is perfect. There is no warpage that I can see. Maybe just a little bit on that. Not, not enough to worry about. Um, oftentimes when you buy the Alpha 3 or any kit with a plastic fin unit that's just in a, in a kit bag that hangs on a peg, uh, just the people pushing things on it, mashing, you know, the kit bags onto the pegs when they stock the shells and stuff, you'll find that the, these plastic fin units can get bent pretty easily. So the um, fact that this one's been in a box uh, since the factory is, uh, is pretty advantageous because it is, as I said, there is not a, it doesn't look bent at all. So that's good. Um, so yeah, these two things will be primering uh, and painting red. And we'll have our white body tube. Uh, somewhere in here there should be some decals, which we are not going to use. Uh, this is the decals that you get with the uh, orange and black kit. Uh, we will be using almost the, well these are self-adhesive decals too, and that's, that's another thing I'm not real fond of. I'm much more of a fan of water slide decals because I think you can make those look painted on with a little solva set proper decal application. Um, so yeah, these will just probably get filed or, I don't know, maybe given away. Uh, and then last but not least, we have, well, we have instructions. We have instructions for the rocket here, and we have instructions for the launch pad and controller here, and that's all good. Um, parachute, pretty standard. And then this last bag, which I'm not going to open right now, is the engine mount with the uh, engine hook and the thrust rings and uh, a rubber band shock cord that we will also not be using. Um, I plan on using a piece of Kevlar uh, and then an elastic uh, shock cord, but we'll talk more about that when we get there. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's the uh, that's everything in the box, and as I said, the first thing we'll do uh, is go ahead and get a piece of BT20 cut to the correct length, and then we'll start filling the seams on that. So uh, I'll go ahead and get started, and I'll see you at the build table after that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to get a, um, a length of body tube that matches the length of body tube that came in the kit, the, the black tube that we're not going to use. Uh, I did go ahead and check um, the uh, references that I have for cloning, and I'm going to get more into that on our next project. Uh, which will be a clone from scratch project. Uh, we will get into all the, the different references you can use to um, to size things like body tubes, get nose cone specifications, that sort of thing. Um, but for now, um, we are just interested in getting a correct length of BT50. Uh, oh, by the way, I think earlier I referenced uh, uh, something about this being a BT20 sized kit. Uh, that was incorrect. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking there. It is a BT50, not BT20. Um, BT20 is actually the uh, diameter of a motor tube for an AB or C motor. So like the motor tube that comes in our kit, that is a BT20. And this is a BT50. So anyway, just uh, 
I'm going to get that little correction <laughs> uh, out there. So uh, what we want to do is we've I checked the dimension on this and it is exactly five and a half inches. Uh, the dimension has not changed during the life of the kit. So back when it was released in the uh, I believe early 70s, uh, this kit has always been five and a half inches long uh, as far as the body tube goes. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of these uh, little guys. These are Estes body tube uh, cutting guides that you can buy. Uh, they're inexpensive. Um, I did find that this particular one, the BT50 sized one, uh, was not gripping the tube very uh, securely. In other words, like it would slide a little bit when it was locked in place. And so what, how this works is you're basically going to slide this Let's see if I can get this to focus. But you're going to slide this whole thing over the tube, and then you've got these little kind of gripper teeth here, or arms, I guess you'd call them. And this slides over the top of them, and it pushes those down onto the tube, and it locks the, and it's, you know, it's supposed to lock it. But it wasn't, this is what it was doing here. It was sliding around too much. So, anyway, if you can see, what I did was I added some tape to shim it a little bit so that it will actually push down a little bit harder on those teeth so that when we securely lock it in now it's not going anywhere so if you get one of these and it's loose yeah just shim it with a little bit of tape and it will uh, increase the grip on the tube so anyway let's go ahead and loosen this just a little bit so that it slides Okay, and what we want to do is we want to get it positioned so that it's in the same, uh, so that we can cut the, a length identical to our kit tube. So if we get this lined up just right, right about there, that looks like we would have about the right length for our body tube. So now that you have this in place, you want to lock it down, pinch it together. And what I use, I have kind of gotten away from X-Acto blades. I have gone over to the Surgeon Scalpel. Uh, this is a Swan Morton scalpel handle, and then you can buy the, uh, the scalpel blades, very much like X-Acto blades. They're different numbers for different shapes. Um, this is a number 11. It's got a little bit of a different shape than an X-Acto blade, but I find these to be uh, a little thinner than X-Acto blades and a little bit sharper. Um, anyway, I haven't regretted switching over to them, and um, so if you notice me using something that's a little bit different than an X-Acto knife, that's what it is. So, okay, so now we've got our tube measured. And I'm going to go ahead and get this cut off camera. Uh, it might take several passes and you don't want to watch me just rolling around the tube with an X-Acto knife. That's not very exciting. So once I get this cut, I will come back and we will proceed to get our um, putty ready to fill in the body tube seams. Okay, so we have our body tube cut. Um, as you can see, it is just about the perfect length. And the only thing I would add to uh, what I was saying before is once you get the tube cut, you might have a few rough edges. You can just take a fingernail file or any kind of sanding stick you may have and just kind of lightly sand the edges, kind of clean up the burrs that you might have from, from the blade. Um, and then, yeah, you should be good to go. And so here we are with our correct tube. And if this is going to fit on there, it might not. I might have to sand this a little bit to get this to fit. I don't want to. I don't want to tweak it. But um, anyway, uh, so now what we're going to do is the Estes tubes uh, are very nice tubes. They are the the seam line in them is very very faint. It's not something that is difficult to fill at all. In fact. I don't think, uh, I, normally I would use something like, uh, let me go grab it here. Um, like this. Uh, 
to fill in the body seams, you, you'd mix this up uh, about to the consistency of pancake batter, and then you just brush it on the uh, the tube over the seam lines. Um, and I might still do that just just to kind of show you the process. But these tubes sometimes they're just they're so well made that the 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 line will fill in with some high build primer, and we can skip this step. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just undo that step just just to show you. Um, and so that's going to be the next thing I do. Let's go ahead and get this mixed up, and then we'll get it brushed onto the tube. And uh, one quick thing before we do. Uh, before we go ahead and do that, what we want to do is we want to take a very light, uh, high grit sandpaper, fine grit sandpaper, and you just want to kind of go over the tube a little bit to take that wax sheen off. Um, Essie's tubes have, you'll notice they're kind of shiny, the, the bare tubes, they have a little shine to them and that's a, a wax coating that they put on them. Well, that wax coating is only going to get in the way of uh, things like paint and primer and and this stuff. So uh, what I do is I just take a very light, uh, this is a very fine grit sanding sponge, uh, and I just kind of go over it and just take that wax sheen off. Um, so we'll go over the whole thing here. And then once we get this done, um, We'll go ahead and mix up our, our wood filler here and we'll get it on the tube. All right. Okay, so now I've got the uh, wood filler mixed up and I don't know if you can tell from from the video here, but this is about the consistency you want it. I, I describe it as like a pancake batter uh, consistency. It's just, uh, you want it uh, kind of runny, but not watery. So, um, uh, basically what we're going to do then is you, you can use a brush, you can use the, the stick, you can use basically whatever you want, uh, but you're just going to apply it over just the seam. Uh, you're not going to apply it to the whole tube. You just kind of want to dab it over the seam line of the tube. And uh, I'll go ahead and do that real quick and then we will uh, come back and take a look at that. Okay, so I've just finished applying the uh, putty to the seam line and um, as you can see, just just apply it directly onto the tube, right right over the line. Um, you kind of I, I did find that the brush helped me a little bit, uh, so I guess I would recommend probably using a brush rather than a stick. I think in the past on larger tubes I've used a finger, um, but the brush works well. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and just just find an old brush. It doesn't you know you don't want to use a new fancy brush, but just find an old brush that you're not going to use for things like glue and stuff and it worked pretty good for that. So anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and set this aside to dry. It probably needs to dry for a few hours uh, to make sure it's good and sandable. And then um, once that's done, we'll come back and sand it down and then we'll get it ready for a primer coat. Now we have our tube filled and then sanded back down to, to basically just the surface of the tube. We just basically want to sand off all that extra filler um, and what you're left with is a tube with with the seams all filled and we're ready for primer so the primer that we're going to use the primer that I've had the best luck with is the duplicolor uh, filler primer with the high build uh, formula um, I've used this on several kits it works fantastic uh, as a matter of fact as I said before you probably don't even need to use the filler if you're going to use the high build primer. Now if you were going to go ahead and use something like Tamiya surface primer which is a, is a perfectly fine primer. I use this on all my plastic modeling projects. Um, you would want to make sure your your, uh, your tube lines were filled in because this this isn't going to do that. So um, another option you have especially on the Estes tubes uh, is to use something like a Mr. Surfacer. Uh, this is 500. Uh, they make it up to 1,000 to 1,200, stuff like that. So you can get it in different thicknesses. And um, this would work very well on the Estes tubes. Now, it would not work as well on something 
like this, which is, this isn't a tube I got from Apogee. Um, and I know you probably can't see it. I Maybe I'll throw in a picture here of the, uh, of the, uh, I'm going to throw in a, a still picture here of the um, tube spiral lines. So you can get an idea of just the difference. Uh, it's a larger tube. This is a much uh, stronger tube than the Estes tubes. It's thicker walled. And, and as such, the spiral lines are, are a lot more pronounced on it. So you would want to definitely uh, probably use something like the, the wood filler that we used for something like this. I'm not saying Mr. Surfacer wouldn't work, but um, the amount you would have to use would probably be expensive. Um, and this stuff is, is cheap. So, um, so yeah, so filler is important, but um, for the Estes tubes, you can probably get away with just a high belt primer. Uh, and that's uh, what our next step is going to be. So the next thing I'm going to do is take this, uh, put a couple of coats of this high belt primer on it, and then we're going to sand it back, and we'll put another coat on and sand it back. And what we'll end up with is a, a very, very smooth uh, surface that is, that is going to be giving us, when we go ahead and paint it and, and gloss coat it, It'll look like plastic. It'll look like this thing was made of plastic. So, um, so that's going to be the next step, and I'll come back when that's done. Okay, we're back, and we have got our tube primered, and um, I'm going to throw up a picture here just to show you that. Uh, if you look really close, you can see that the tube lines, the spiral lines on the tube are completely filled. The only thing left to do uh, with the primer stage is uh, this high build primer has uh, a bit of tooth to it. it because it's high build, you know, you're going to have a, a, that little bit of a rough texture on, on, on your finish. And so what I want to do is I'm going to take a, a piece of sanding film this is at least 800 grit. It's it's not marked, so I don't know the exact uh, uh, grit of this, but it's at least 800. It's it's a fine, very fine uh, sanding film. And all I'm going to do is take a little bit of water here and do just a light wet sand on the rocket, just to get that tooth knocked down, so that we have a nice smooth finish for our finish primer, which, uh, as I stated earlier, I think we're going to use the Tamiya fine surface primer and that will serve as the finished primer for the tube and the primer coat for our plastic surfaces. Um, uh, one other thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm not going to do it on camera, I'm going to take the plastic uh, nose cone and fin here off and then I'm going to go ahead and, and take those over and wash them with soapy water. Just like any plastic model, uh, there will be mold release uh, agent on the plastic so you want to make sure if you're going to paint that that you give your uh, plastic parts just a little uh, rinse off in some warm soapy water. And so we'll go ahead and do that and then we will come back and get some uh, of the white primer on. Okay, so uh, we have finished um, sanding uh, the body tube down. It is nice and, and smooth like glass. It is ready for the fine surface primer. Uh, I have washed the plastic pieces, uh, so they are now ready for primer. And the one thing I was going to uh, show you real quick, uh, on the fin unit, you have this little, uh, you know, this little collar here that goes inside the body tube. We don't need to paint that. Um, in fact, we don't want to paint that because this is going to be a glued surface. And <clears throat> so I'm not going to go ahead and, I'm not going to paint these separately. I'm going to go ahead and put the body tube over, you know, kind of just install it temporarily onto the fin unit. And we will primer this as one piece and this as a single piece. Uh, the reason we're doing the nose cone separately, uh, and this is totally optional obviously, I am going to go ahead and paint the shoulder on the nose cone so that it looks more like the red nose cone that was uh, in the kit during the 70s. Um, you don't have to do that because obviously when the rocket is sitting on the shelf, you're not going to see the shoulder. But it's just something I'm doing um, just to kind of be, for the sake of completeness, 
Uh, and so I will paint these two parts separately like that. So uh, we will do that over here at the paint booth. Uh, don't know if I'll film that. Uh, if the next segment you see is me at the paint booth and I decided to film it, if not, I will be back and you will see these two pieces in white primer. Okay, so we're over here at the spray booth. This isn't going to be uh, anything you haven't seen before. We're just going to go ahead and uh, shoot a misty coat, uh, first coat of the fine surface primer over our two pieces. Um, safety first, so you always want to make sure when you're spraying indoors that you have a good uh, respirator. And so you won't be able to hear me. I'm going to go ahead and turn the compressor on and put it on the mask. And uh, we'll see how we end up. Okay, so um, that's the first coat. Uh, I always start with a very light first coat. Um, give it a nice tacky uh, first coat for the subsequent coats to, uh, to adhere to and that, that prevents runs. Um, pretty basic spray painting. Um, so uh, yeah, that's gonna be uh, basically a rinse and repeat process. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put three, four, five more coats on it till we get a nice even white uh, with no orange plastic showing through and uh, we'll come back and see what that looks like. Okay so we have our parts primered. Um, right now you can see I've got the uh, the body tube still sitting here on this um, on this Tamiya stand here. It's still a little bit wet. I just put a final coat on that one and I think the body tube we're just going to leave with the primer coat. I don't think we need to put another coat of white enamel over it. Um, this white is looking fine. It's smooth. I think it's uh, smooth enough to accept decals and we're going to be putting a gloss coat over it anyway. So I don't see any reason to put another coat of white over white. So I think the body tube is pretty good, ready to go. Um, 
So our nose cone and our fin assembly are now primered and ready for the, uh, the red coat. And we have some choices here for the color of red that we're going to use. So I brought out some things to show you. Okay, so uh, the alpha that I, that I made, okay, so I did uh, that nose cone is, as you can see, a little bit darker or I'm sorry, a little bit lighter than the uh, Constellation nose cone. And the color reds I used on those, the Constellation is this cherry red, and the Alpha is the banner red. Right now, I think I'm leaning towards the banner red for the Alpha 3. My other choices would be a Italian red, or to airbrush uh, a Tamiya acrylic, uh, just their standard X7 red. But uh, I think the airbrush might be a little bit overkill. I don't think we need to uh, to go that you know detailed with it. It's um, I mean airbrushing is nice. It's fun. Uh, it would provide a perfectly uh, you know probably provide a very nice looking finished coat on it. The one problem I would have with the airbrush is it would go on very thin. Um, this rocket's going to be probably hitting the ground and getting scraped along at different places. And I think I would probably like to have the thicker uh, rattle can paint, enamel paint on it, just for durability. So I think I'm going to rule out the airbrush. The Italian red, I'm not seeing a big difference with the banner red. And I have more of this. This is practically a full can. So I think my decision right now is to go with the banner red. Um, I like the, the darker red. That's actually my favorite color, is this dark red. Uh, if you just ask me what my favorite color is, it's this deep dark red. But for this rocket, uh, I think the, the lighter colored red is going to be a better choice. So um, that's the next step, and I'm probably going to just go ahead and do that off camera because I have to go outside to, to use these larger rattle cans. Um, my paint booth, it's okay for the smaller cans, but these big cans just shoot too much paint and it'll get, get on the walls if I try to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that outside. I will have these two things painted when I get back. So it has uh, been a couple of days and our paint is now dry. Um, I did call an audible um, after the last segment uh, that I filmed and I said I wasn't going to paint the body tube white. Uh, I looked at it again and I decided to change my mind on that so I did actually paint the body tube with uh, two or three coats of the Krylon gloss white and I'm really glad I did because it it, um, it ensures that the level of gloss will be uniform uh, over the whole rocket so uh, right now I'm very happy with the way it turned out um, the uh, primary painting uh, is done and so uh, we can go one of two directions here. I could go ahead and put the decals on and finish the finishing portion of the rocket, or we could go ahead and start on the engine mount. And I think I'm going to do the latter. I think I'm going to hold off on the decals for now. And let's go ahead and put our engine mount together. Uh, there is going to be some deviation from the uh, standard instructions on this uh, because I like to put a Kevlar... Um, shock cord uh, on my rockets because the rubber band that comes with most Estes kits uh, it's fine it'll work for a couple of years but if you're gonna have your rockets for a long time say 10 years these rubber bands will just turn into just nothing they will break uh, they will disintegrate basically and crumble and become brittle and you know they, they will no longer work as a as a uh, shop cord so and, and if you go ahead and glue them inside like the instructions have you do uh, they're they're very difficult to replace so uh, what I like to do is I like to put a little Kevlar uh, line um, and secure it to the engine mount and make a loop in that and then you can attach a rubber band a piece of elastic anything like that because now you have something where it's very easy to uh, replace that when you need to. So anyway, I'll show you what I mean when we get there. But let me bring the camera in and we will go ahead and start working on the engine mount next. 
Okay, so one quick thing I wanted to uh, to show you before we start uh, putting together the uh, uh, engine assembly. Uh, I keep folders on all my projects, and uh, this is just something that's kind of handy to do. Um, you just buy these little uh, cheapo folders at Walmart. They're like 10 or 15 cents each. And um, inside I keep uh, a copy of the instructions. Uh, if it's a clone project, you know, I'll be printing those out off of some place like Jim Z. And um, I will oftentimes order decals uh, for various projects if I don't want to print my own. Um, and I'll order them ahead of time. Like I'll figure out, you know, hey, I want to do a clone of this rocket, and then I'm going to go buy the decals for it, and it may be a couple of months or a year or two before I get around to doing the project. But when I make these folders, um, you know, I have a place to put everything as I acquire uh, what I need to do the particular clone or project that I want to do. And then another thing that I do, and I've done with the Alpha here, Alpha 3, is um, I have made up my own little uh, construction notes form and this is just a place where I can document um, uh, like any notes of special uh, deviations I made while I was building the kit um, some basic information about the kit when I started it when I completed it but most important on here is this section here where I keep track of what colors I used uh, if I go out and fly this rocket um, and it gets dragged through the dirt and um, gets all scratched up and I decide I want to touch up the paint, uh, I now have noted exactly um, what brand of paint, what type of paint, what the color number was uh, so I can match the, the paint if I want to do touch up work. So just something that's kind of handy. Um, not everybody does that, but I do. So. I just wanted to show you that real quick. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and start working on our engine tube. Uh, it's in this little parts bag here that came with the kit. So we have our engine tube, our uh, centering rings here. We have the shock cord, which we will not be using. Um, an engine hook, a little screw eye, which is very, very small. I probably will be replacing that. In fact, I know I will be replacing that. Uh, then you have your engine hook retainer and our launch lug, which uh, we'll have to apply later. Um, sometimes on launch lugs, uh, especially with rockets that I'm building uh, for, you know, that I want to look really nice, sometimes I'll leave the launch lug off and if I ever want to fly it, um, you can just, you know, use some, some tape and tape it on just temporarily if you want to fly your rocket. Um, some of mine that I spend a lot of time on, if they're like a real detailed scale rocket, I won't, uh, I won't be flying them anyway so they don't get a launch lug. But anyway, I'll make a decision about that. Um, and since this is a clone, uh, and I want it to be basically, a, or not a clone, this is a kind of a, a retro uh, version of this kit, uh, and I want it to look like the, the retro version. These engine hooks, if you notice, they have this little, um, uh, I don't know if you can see that, that little hook on the end is kind of like a, a whole bunch of bends in it. Well, I replaced those with the old style, original engine hooks that you would get back in the 70s because I want it to retain that, that 70s look. So I will be replacing that. And also I said this screw eye is very, very small. And I am going to beef that up a little bit because I do want to fly this rocket. So I will be uh, increasing the size of the screw eye. So you can see the bigger one there. I also got that. Uh, I think I got that from Semrock a long time ago. I have some old parts, but uh, they're probably still available from E-Rockets. So anyway, those two parts I'm going to replace. And uh, as I said, I'm going to replace the rubber band uh, shock cord. Uh, these are fine for, you know, if you're just going to go out and fly it once or twice and that's going to be it. Um, you know, go ahead and, and use these. I don't like them because after a while, a couple of years, three or four years, they will start to get very brittle 
and they will break. They just kind of crumble. So uh, what I like to do instead is I like to take a piece of um, 100 pound Kevlar, braided Kevlar line, and we will be securing it around the engine tube uh, thusly. If you can see that, we'll, we'll be gluing it around the engine tube and then it'll go up like that and that will and then we'll have a loop on this end and then on the loop you can secure um, I use a piece of this uh, nylon elastic it's just one eighth inch elastic um, and that will work great for a shock cord and if you ever need to and, uh, and this has this will have uh, this has kind of rubber bands in it too and this will eventually decay but when, you, when it becomes time to replace this, the Kevlar won't wear out, or it shouldn't. You'll have that loop down there. You just, uh, you just pull the loop out through the back of the rocket, you cut off your, your old shock cord, and you tie on a new one, and you're good to go. So it, it makes your rockets uh, last a lot longer, because you won't have to. If you, if you glue this in like they tell you in the kit instructions, using that little trifold paper method, uh, when it's time to replace them, it's it's a bear to get those out without tearing up your body tube. So I just toss them, don't use them, and uh, you'll see what we do uh, with, with this. So uh, let me get some glue and we will get started. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and start here. I'm going to go ahead and just work on this, um, and I'll kind of talk while I'm working. I'm going to do it in real time here. So, uh, if this is getting boring, you can just skip ahead, uh, because this is a fairly straightforward process, and um, not everybody probably going to want to watch it. Uh, for glue, um, I'm going to go ahead and use 5-Minute uh, Epoxy. Um, you can use wood glue sometimes when you're gluing paper to paper, that's fine. It, it's an excellent bond for paper to paper and paper to wood. Um, but we're going to have some places where I'm going to be gluing paper to plastic, and for that I prefer epoxy because the plastic uh, doesn't, uh, the wood glue doesn't work that great on a, on a plastic surface. So, um, so yeah, just going to start and let's go. Um, so the first thing before we get the epoxy out, we're going to mark our body tube here and get the slot cut for the engine hook. I just use the um, the centering ring here is a guide for where to cut the slots. Where's my scalpel? You just want a little slot big enough to stick the end of the engine hook through. So that works right there. It should do it. So we got that. glue ready. Doesn't take a ton of glue. A lot of people waste a lot of epoxy I see on videos where they just put up gobs of epoxy and they don't use it all. In fact that's probably too much right there but With epoxy, you always want to make sure it is good and mixed because if you do not mix it thoroughly, the bond will not be worth anything and it will fail. You want to get it looking cloudy, nice and cloudy with 5-minute epoxy, clear epoxy anyway. Another type of epoxy I like to use a lot is um, JB Weld. Obviously for that it's going to be gray. Okay. Okay, that's pretty good. So we're just gonna go ahead and apply a little here around the edge of the tube.
Okay, that's good. Now you're going to take the centering ring that does not have the slot cut in it and put it here at the top. This is going to be the top of the engine mount. And I'm going to put that like that. And we are going to take our Kevlar and we're going to tie a knot and we're going to tie a loop in the end of it. Get that through there. Come on. Uh, sometimes I have to tie a bigger loop because I got fat fingers. You waste a little more Kevlar, but that's okay. It's cheap. You don't want the loop to be too big on this, but um, just big enough. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and cut that extra off. It's not sticking way out there. And then you're going to take this end and feed it through the loop. Okay, and then we're going to take this, put it that way, so it's kind of into the glue that we just put down. rotate it so it's away from the hook there a little bit and then we're going to oh, paper towel here and before the glue completely sets up I want to put a little bit more glue just there to hold that shock cord up against the uh, centering ring. Oh, got a little bit on the outside of the ring. We don't want that. Okay, try to wipe it off of the centering ring because you don't want to make that a tight fit. Okay, so we'll go ahead and let that set up and I'm going to pause the video while that epoxy finishes drying and then we'll come back. Alright, our epoxy has dried and the next thing we're going to do is, do you see where this... Uh, Kevlar line is coming over the top of the centering ring. We want to cut a kind of a V-shaped groove in the centering ring for that that uh, Kevlar to sit inside, so that we don't cause a bump there when we're trying to uh, install this into the the back half of the body tube. So, uh, so you just do that with a knife, a hobby knife. It doesn't have to be super deep, just deep enough to to let that line sit down in. So I will do that here. It's kind of a V shape.
Okay, so now you can see. So I cut that little groove right there, and then when we pull that forward, the line will sit right down inside like that, and we'll, this will go forward into the, the body tube. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is put on our nylon uh, engine hook retainer. So I'm going to mix up some more epoxy for that. Way too much, guys. Don't need that much, but oh well. ready. So the um, the way that most instructions will have you do it is they'll have the the nylon engine retainer the the edge of it sitting about an inch back from the end of the engine tube. I'm just gonna eyeball it. That is not a critical dimension. You don't want it too close to the end because you don't want it because then you can't pull your engine tube or your engine hook out of the way to put your engine in. But about an inch back, plus or minus a quarter inch or so is pretty good. I apologize for my tremor. It's probably very frustrating for people to watch. <laughs> it's no fun for me either. Okay. Put that on like that, and I, you know, kind of rotate it as you kind of push it up into place. That's pretty good. Just wipe off the excess glue. Straighten up the engine hook so that it looks pretty good. And then we will put a little bit of epoxy in our groove and glue our um, nylon shock or our, our Kevlar shock cord into the groove. Just kind of have to hold that with your fingers until it bites a little bit. And then, once this sets up, we will be ready to install it uh, into the uh, fin can here. And then we'll put the centering ring on from the other side. Okay, so now this is uh, set up a little bit and. Um, I've got my epoxy pre-mixed this time, so you don't have to sit there and watch me stir that. And we're just going to go ahead and apply a little bit to the uh, to this end of our engine uh, mount assembly, and then we will feed it through the tail of the rocket and apply the centering from the other side. So. And you always want to make sure you don't get glue too close to the engine hook or you'll end up gluing it to the tube. I've done that a few times. I mean, not a few times. I've done it once at least. And then I stopped putting the glue that close. <laughs> yeah, I try to leave about an eighth or so inch of clearance there. Okay, so we got that in there. We're going to feed this down through the top of our... Uh, trying not to get too much glue on the sides there. And then this guy, what we want to do too is you want to position the engine hook so it's kind of halfway between two of the fins. 
doesn't really matter which two, but then we gotta feed this through. Okay, so now you can see that we have our centering ring on the back of the uh, engine mount. We have good clearance for opening up our engine hook to get the engine inside. And now we just got to wait for that glue to set up. And then we will uh, glue this portion onto the, uh, the rest of the body tube here. So now that our engine mount is installed, we're going to go ahead and work on our shock cord. Um, now the reason we did this, uh, again, we didn't want to use the rubber band because those disintegrate. So we're using this Kevlar as our shock cord, or at least the, the, the lower part of the shock cord. Um, the reason you don't want to use Kevlar for the entire shock cord is because, as you can see, this is uh, it's thin. Um, it's very very strong. It's a lot stronger than the paper tube. And what you don't want to happen is when your shock cord comes out uh, you know explosively these can do what's called a zipper and a zipper is basically where your shock cord comes down and tears you know the the, the, the strength of the shock cord tears through the paper tube as if it gets pulled this way uh, during the ejection charge or if there's a lot of forces you know, going, you know, in a way that's going to pull the shock cord against the edge of that tube. So we don't want that. We don't want our uh, Kevlar shock cord to protrude out the top of the tube at its maximum. So what we're going to do is we're going to tie a loop. And what we want to do is make sure the loop is below the top of the shock cord so there's no chance that our Kevlar can get up to the top and start causing a zipper. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take and put our per tube down here and we're going to figure out where do we want our loop. So we want to be about, I like to put about an inch below or so. It doesn't really matter. It can be it can be lower, but somewhere in the middle there, about an inch is good. So you go ahead and you're going to, I don't know if you can see this or not because my hands are blocking, but so I'm going to have the if the, if the tube's sitting there, we're, we're going to have about the right amount there. We're going to be just a, a little bit here, about an inch from the top. That's good. That's where we want to be. So we take our loop here. We're going to go ahead and tie it just like we did the other knot. This loop you want to make a little bigger just because it'll be easier to work with. And there we have it. Okay, and as before, we're going to cut off that um, extra bit. You can leave maybe an eighth or a quarter inch like that. And now you have a shock cord. But you want this long enough, the reason you want this long enough to go back through the engine tube. And actually, I may have made it a little short. No, it's okay. You want it to stick out the engine tube long, or long enough to be able to, to tie your elastic onto it. Because this is the part you're going to replace. This should never have to be replaced. So as long as it'll stick out far enough for you to uh, tie your new elastic on every time you want to change it, that's how you change it. Um, so this is good, this is perfect. This is what we want. So now we can go ahead and we can leave that just like that. Now we can go ahead and glue our body tube onto the tail assembly.
Okay, and I'll do that off camera. That's just uh, just a simple epoxy glue joint there. Again, use epoxy on this particular kit because you are gluing plastic to paper, and epoxy uh, is just better for that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we'll come back. And at that point, we will be ready to start on decals. So one part that uh, I'm gonna, I, I am gonna do uh, is to mention that when you are gluing this piece onto this piece, there's a. Uh, it, I was just getting ready to do it, and I realized I probably want to mention this. Um, it's always better to apply the glue, the epoxy, to the inside of the body tube. And so. Uh, you just want to take it your end of your body tube and apply it to the inside of the body. Don't apply it to the outside of this because then what will happen when you put your body tube or when you put your body tube on, it's going to push the glue and it's going to run down the side of your um, fin can. Whereas if you put it on the inside of the tube, it will just kind of push up into the tube. I'll show you what I mean here. And it just makes for a cleaner joint. So we're going to go ahead and put that on. And what we should see is not too much glue coming out. See? So now when you look at it, you don't see any glue oozing out because it, it's oozing up. Uh, it's being pushed up. The extra glue is being pushed up on top of the uh, centering ring there. So that gives you a nice clean joint. So I did want to show that. So uh, yeah, I'm going to set this aside to dry and then we are ready to do decals next. So now that um, the glue has dried, you can see that I've gone ahead and attached our uh, elastic shock cord. Uh, I use the 1 8 inch just sewing elastic. You can get it at uh, any department store very cheap. Um, I used about, I don't know if you can see this on the video, about four body tube lengths. Um, long is plenty for for low power rockets and um, I don't know if you can see it on camera but the other thing I've done is I've attached this little double ended loop here made out of Kevlar to the screw eye and what that's going to be is our parachute attachment point uh, I don't uh, permanently install parachutes in my rockets because I like to have the ability to uh, make them interchangeable uh, depending on launch conditions, what kind of motor I'm going to put in it, how high I expect it to go, how much wind there is, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so what I do is I use these uh, these little snap swivels that you can get in uh, any fishing tackle uh, area of Walmart or Target or, or any sporting goods store. And uh, you want... Uh, not the teeny tiny ones. This is this is probably the medium sized one that you would use on maybe a you know five or ten pound test line or something for uh, for fishing. Uh, but the way they work is you would tie the parachute to the uh, closed loop end uh, using like a slip knot, like you would normally tie it to the screw eye. And on this end, uh, that, that's, I don't know if you can see that. So you have the maybe I can put it down on the paper here. So on this end you have this little loop, and on this end you have a clip. And this clip is just like a safety pin. It just it comes unclipped just like that. And that's what you would put onto your loop, your Kevlar loop. So I won't do it here, but um, that way it makes it very quick and easy to change out your parachutes uh, depending on the conditions you're flying in. So um, that pretty much completes the uh, assembly of the rocket. Now the only thing left is to finish up putting on the decals and um, maybe a little bit of gloss coat and to protect the decals and we will have a finished rocket and then I have to make a decision about the launch lug. So that's it. Getting close to the end. Okay, so it is decal time for our Alpha 3, and there are not very many decals on this rocket. In fact, there are only three, and uh, I'm actually missing one. So, um, I had my Alpha 3 decals printed up several years ago uh, by um, 
Excelsior Rocketry, and, and unfortunately they are no longer around. But um, Tom over at Tango Papa decals, uh, he uh, has loads of retro decals for old Estes kits, and uh, I would highly recommend going to his website if you're in the market for uh, any of the older Estes decals. Um, these decals are black, which means they would be very easy to print um, on an inkjet printer, and then you would just want to seal them with something like the um, Microscale Industries liquid decal film. Um, and those would work just fine. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, as you can see, I have the, the the decal sheet has a lot of different decals, but the catalog model only uses these two, um, and those are the only two I'm going to put on are the two uh, wraparound decals with the roll pattern. Uh, there's also an Estes logo decal that goes kind of right in the middle here uh, between the two roll-ons, and um, that's the one I'm missing. I actually have one, but it's way too big. So I'm going to have to order that or print it myself. Uh, I am not going to hold up this video for that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we will just finish the rocket with, uh, with just the two decals um, as far as this video is concerned. And then I'll go ahead and uh, get that one added and put it on later before I do the final gloss coat on it. So this will probably be the last segment uh, before we are finished. And what I'm going to do now is move the camera in a little bit closer and we'll put on a decal. Okay, so we're ready to do our first decal. We're going to start with the uh, the upper roll pattern. I'm just going to put it in my uh, bowl of warm water. Uh, some people add a drop of dish soap. I don't. I don't typically bother with it. Um, I might if I was having trouble getting the decals to come loose, but I don't. I don't usually have a problem with Excelsior decals. So we're just going to let it sit there for a minute or so. Um, one thing while that's doing that, one of the other things I'm going to use is this Solva set. Um, this is actually a model railroad product. It's made by Walders. It is a decal um, setting solution. And what it's going to do is it actually melts the decal onto the surface so that it has a very painted on look. You, uh, It's really effective at getting rid of that a clear edge that you'll see on some decals. Uh, this one you won't you won't typically have that problem because there is the black lines above and below so you won't see that edge too much anyway. But anyway I'm going to go ahead and, and brush a little bit of this on when I get all the decals done just to make them really set. So it looks like our decal is coming loose. Yes it is. So let's go ahead and get it transferred onto the rocket. This is exciting. Decals are always my favorite part of building a kit of any kind because it's really where the model starts to look finished. I'm just going to kind of slowly rotate this around. Let's try not to get it to get stuck to itself. And we'll just rotate it there. All right. And it looks like we have a pretty good fit on the edge, and I'm just going to move that up a little bit. And right about there. Looks good. So once I have it where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and get that edge kind of squeegeed out with a Q-tip. And I'm sorry, I know you can't see this because it's away from the camera, but basically it's just kind of squeegeeing out the, the water that's underneath the decal because you don't want that. All right, that looks pretty good and I am happy with that. So there you have that first decal in place. And I am very happy with the way that went on, and I'm very happy with the fit. Uh, that's one thing I always, you know, when I buy aftermarket decals, I'm always a little nervous the first one to see if the diameter, you know, the uh, the length of the decal is going to be a good fit for the diameter, but this one's perfect. So 
Uh, Excelsior was an outstanding decal company. I'm really sad that they aren't around anymore. I never had a bad set of decals from them. Never had a bad set from Tom either over at Tango Papa either. So, um, but anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and squeegee a little bit more water out of this and then we'll come back and do the last decal. Okay, last decal going on. Well, it's not the last one, but the last one on this video. Maybe on a future video, I'll uh, I'll show you the final rocket with the with the Estes logo decal on it. I'll just bring it up for a quick show and tell. But for this video, it's uh, it's not going to make the cut. The original issue of this uh, rocket, as as you saw in the introductory portion of the video, didn't have any decals. It was just a uh, red and white plane. I like it better with the uh, with the roll-ons though. Okay, it looks like we are free from the backing paper and we will bring this one out and put it on the same way as we did the top one. Get that started, bring it around, bring it around, turn. Darn good. Now I'm not being super super picky here and lining up the patterns. I mean I guess you could do that if you were really a stickler. I'm just kind of putting these on where they where they fall. And that looks pretty good. Trimming air there. Let's see if I can get that, get that cleaned up. Got it. Sweetie. Alright, there it is, the Alpha 3. As good as it's going to get for this video. Alright, so uh, let me go ahead and get this cleaned up and we'll come back with some closing thoughts. Okay, so we're back for one last segment. Um, I decided, uh, I know it, it, I said I wasn't going to um, worry about putting the, uh, the Estes logo decal on and that because of that I was going to hold off on the future 
but I decided uh, to go ahead and give printing my own decal uh, a shot and it came out very well and so I applied it and I'm happy with it so I said what the heck let's just go ahead and shoot the last segment of finishing the rocket with putting the final gloss coat over the decals and we will do that right now okay so we're ready to start our gloss coat and one thing we're gonna do I, I only want to put the uh, gloss coat on the body tube I'm not wanting to gloss coat the nose cone or the fins uh, the paint looks fine, the gloss is fine on that, and it's an enamel paint, so it's, it's fairly tough. And uh, so, yeah, I just want to—I I just want to gloss coat the body tube. So, I'm going to remove the nose cone. He says, "Okay." So, after we take the nose cone out, what we got to be concerned about is. I'm going to be holding the rocket this way and, and brushing down with the gloss coat so I don't want to get gloss coat on the shock cord so that's what the masking tape is for so we're going to just put a little bit of masking tape over the shock cord to protect it just kind of stretch it out a little bit here do it okay so now we're just going to take a little bit of our future by the way this is uh, this is an older label I think if you're looking for it now it's called pledge floor care uh, but it, the label looks different I think it's a brown label now but anyway this stuff is fantastic I love it I use it on all my larger modeling projects and I don't want to make a mess with this just gonna Pour a little bit into this little cup. That's plenty. Probably too much, actually. And we're gonna get some paper towels so we don't get this stuff all over my cutting mat. Done with the tape. And okay. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna hold it up like this and brush it on and slowly rotate the rocket around. I'm going to use the SD's logo as a starting point and you just put it on just straight. There's real, really no magic to it. Just want to go in even strokes. Turn it. You want this stuff on pretty thick. Um, it's not super hard as nails, but it's uh, if you put two or three coats on, it will be uh, on heavy enough to give your decals a nice shield. And that way, if you fly it and it gets dragged across the ground, you're not going to be scratching up your rocket too bad. Now, if I were doing a like a display model, like a plastic model or highly detailed model, I would either apply this with an airbrush. Actually, there's some another product that I use for uh, for static models, but um, this stuff is great for rockets. And just brushing it on a body tube like this, where it's just flat, 
you don't have any crevices or things you're trying to get into, it works just fine. So, Okay, that's good for coat number one. Um, then you just want to kind of stand it up so that the excess drips off. And this nice thing about the future is it also will self-level. So um, you don't have to worry too much about um, you know, uh, brush marks on it or drips because it it will tend to self-level and you just want to, you know, let, I want to put in a fresh paper towel because that stuff dripped pretty well. And it's going to stick to the mat here when <laughs> it dries. So let's get that up. Get that off of there. Uh, this is acrylic, so it's a water cleanup. Um, and you know what? I just touched that with the paper towel, and I didn't want to do that. Okay, we're going to do one more little pass here. Just because I brushed it with the paper towel, I didn't mean to do that. I just want to touch it up a little bit here. Sometimes it'll make a little suds action on you and you just want to kind of lightly brush those off because you don't want soap bubbles on there. That's uh, one disadvantage to brushing it on as opposed to airbrushing it on. So once you're happy with it, you just kind of stand it up so it'll dry, and let it be. Uh, I know that was kind of off camera here. I'll move this over. So you can see. And it's just kind of leaning up there. Move the camera a little bit. There you go. Okay, so you just lean it up like that. Let it dry. You can do two, three, four coats, however, however many you want. Uh, and once you're done with that, you're done. The rocket is finished and ready to fly. Okay, so that's going to put a wrap on the Estes Alpha 3 build, um, our retro Alpha 3 build. Uh, I think it came out really nice. I'm very pleased with it. Um, just to summarize, we, we basically took a currently available Alpha 3, which is black and orange, and we uh, set aside the black body tube that came with the kit, and we took a piece of plain body tube and cut it to length, uh, primered and painted it white. We painted the nose cone and fins red to match the 70s uh, catalog scheme. Um, I had these decals printed, uh, but you can do the same, or you can print your own. And uh, that was it. This is a pretty simple kit. Uh, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't particularly difficult. We did do a little bit of upgrades to the recovery system. Um, and that's it. It, it's, uh, it was a fun build. I enjoyed it. Uh, this was just a quick uh, first build to try to get used to filming and, and what that's going to look like on the channel. Um, so let's take a minute and talk about our next project. Uh, I believe I would like to do a full, um, a full clone from scratch, no kit parts this time, of an Estes X-Ray. And we will again go ahead and give it the paint scheme from the 
70s catalogs. That would be the white with the blue nose cone and the black trim. And um, But we'll do it all from scratch. We'll, we'll use manufactured parts, but I'm just saying we won't be starting with a kit. So um, we'll print our own decal. We'll research what parts we need. We'll have to go look up and uh, find out the length of the body tubes and we will have references for all that and I will share all that information on the video. So that's going to be next up on the channel and as far as that goes, have a great one.